Welcome to the Vineyard Church Message of the Week. We hope you enjoy this message. For more information on this podcast or other resources, go to vineyardlive.us. To learn more about us, go to the vineyardchurch.us. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, we are so glad that you are joining us, that you are with us, uh, whether you are here physically with us or you are um, joining us online, maybe uh, watching in your kitchen or you're, you're with your church group. We just want to say thank you so much for being here with us. So question for you. Have you found yourself in this season just asking like, man, Lord, what is your plan for my life? Like, what are you doing in me? right now. Um, if, if you found yourself asking that question, I believe that uh, the Lord has given me a prophetic word for you. And I believe that it's going to bring some, some, some freedom, some clarity, some direction to your life. And I'm excited about it. I think it's fresh bread. I don't know if it's gluten-free. Um, I don't know if that matters to you, but if it does, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you could go with me to 2 Timothy 1.9, we're going to start there. And this is what it says. It says, he gave us resurrection life and he drew us to himself by his holy calling on our lives. And it wasn't because of any good that we have done, but by his divine pleasure and his marvelous grace that confirmed our union with the anointed Jesus even before time began. Now, I, I, I love, love this passage because it, is packed with some truth that I think we need to be reminded of in 2020. 2020 has been crazy, right? It's been wild. I don't think I have to do a recap for anyone because you were there, and it's just been nuts. But what this passage tells us is that living on the inside of us, we have resurrection life. We have the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave living in us. But not only that, it says that we are being drawn near. We've been drawn near to God by the holy calling on our life. That means that whatever is happening in the world around you, you have a holy calling on you. Now, what is this word calling? What does that even mean? It's very Christian, very churchy. It's just God's plan for your life. It's what God had in mind when he created you. And the calling or God's plan on our lives, it is often revealed to us in stages or in levels. And it's, it's something that we are going to talk about. But it's something that actually is not, it's not about your good deeds. It's not about your good behavior. It's not about where you come from. It's not about your background. It is purely a result of God's grace and his love for you. But this idea of calling can be very confusing. And what this pandemic has done, I believe one of the things that it has done is it has made us question God's plan for our lives. It has brought so much confusion about our understanding of what he has planned for us. But what we are going to discover today is that your calling will call you. I want you to drop that in the chat right now, that your calling will call you. The title of this talk is When Your Calling Calls. So let's pray and we're going to dive in. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much uh, just for who you are in our lives. We welcome you. We honor you. And we just say, come. Would you... Uh, encourage us? Would you teach us? Would you um, bring your, your, your freedom? Remind us again of who we are and what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, you know, everyone's talking about Hamilton right now. Have you guys noticed that or is it just me? It's everywhere. It's on my Instagram. It's on my, like, Facebook. It's everywhere. Well, fun fact about me I actually was in a stage play as a teenager in Chicago. Yes, I was. Uh, some of my best work, actually. Uh, one of my cousins, uh, she's a brilliant like, writer, and she wrote this play for me to star in. Okay, that part's not quite true. I can't, I can't lie in church. Um, I had a supporting role. My character might have died, um, but that doesn't matter. We don't need to talk about that. But what I do remember is I remember just the hard work that we 
put into this play. We, we, we rehearsed for hours. We, we memorized our lines. It was very, very intense. I thought that I was on my way, everybody, to being the next Denzel Washington or Michael B. Jordan. I don't know why some of you guys are like laughing at that. That wasn't a joke. That was very serious. But I, I thought that, hey, I'm one role away from that breakthrough role, and then I'm, you know, fame. I got it, right? But as I continued to show up to rehearsal and I continued to, like, uh, join this, like, collective of really talented people, it became abundantly clear that that was not about to happen for me, uh, everyone. It just wasn't, it wasn't in the cards, right? And one of the things that made that very clear was uh, some, of the, some of the actors, things just came so easy to them. Like, they could do the whole cry on command thing, and I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's, in, it's, it's crazy. Like, you could just turn on tears, and then you could turn it off. Um, that, to me, is like half the battle. If you could do that, you are incredible. And I just knew I can't, I can't do things like that. Their acting was so believable, sincere, Mine, on the other hand, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get caught up in the weeds of this story. Let's just say again, by the time I was done, you know, with this whole acting season and the theater season, it was very clear that God did not call me to be an actor. And that wasn't his plan for my life. And I really wish, I wish that calling was that easy all the time. I, I, I wish that knowing what God has and, have, uh, and, and has called us to is you know, just was that simple, but we all know that it is not that easy all the time. And we know that things, when it comes to calling, it just gets fuzzy. When we start to think about our, our personal um, calling, what God has in store for us, it's confusing, it's cloudy. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I actually find myself trying to understand my calling and trying to define my calling by cultural milestones. So, so what I mean by that is like, all right, by 25, I should have my master's degree. By 30, I should have kids. And then by 40, I should be this far in my career. By 60, I should have this much saved. And we, we may not use that word calling per se, but we are, are trying to understand our calling through this lens. And when we do this, what happens is we start to just feel behind. Right? You start to feel like you are behind some invisible line, that you're not where you should be in life, or that things can no longer happen because that season has passed. And if this isn't our perspective per se, and maybe we, we know, like, we're like, no, calling is about a few specific things that God has told me to do. But what I find is that in seasons of chaos, when things get crazy, when, when seasons get really uncertain, what happens is we just believe that, oh man, what God has told me to do, it can't happen now. Like, it's over. We, we believe that what he has called us to do is now non-existent. But I, I want to go back to that passage in 2 Timothy 1.9 and read it one more time. It just says this, he gave us resurrection life and drew us to himself by his holy calling on our lives. And it wasn't because of any good that we have done, but by his divine pleasure and marvelous grace that confirmed our union with the anointed Jesus before time began. Paul, he very clearly says that each and every one of us, we have a holy calling on our lives. That means that your life and your calling is essential on the earth. We need what you have. We need what God has planned for you to do on the earth. But the question is, how do we recognize and step into what Paul calls our holy calling? How do we do that? And I believe that the Bible says a lot about how to recognize and step into this. And one story that I want to look at today that I think really gives us a lot of truth in this area is the book of Nehemiah. And I want you to go with me to Nehemiah 1. And as you kind of go there, what I want to do is give us a little bit of context about the book of Nehemiah. So Nehemiah was originally written uh, combined with the book of Ezra. They were one book telling one story. And that story was about life for God's people after 70 years of exile in Babylon. 
So God's people for hundreds of years, they, they sinned and they uh, committed idol worship. They turned their backs on the Lord. So because of that, they were conquered by the nation of Babylon. And we pick up in the book of Nehemiah. Now these conquered people, these exiled people, they have returned back to a destroyed Jerusalem, to a destroyed Judah, where everything is in ruins now. Everything is chaotic. No one serves God. No one knows God. Uh, everything is destroyed. And they're returning back to this land. And there are some key people like Ezra, who is a Bible teacher. He, he's an awesome, really good Bible teacher. And then there's Nehemiah. He's just a guy who worked a regular nine to five. He was a cupbearer for the king of Persia. But their goal was to restore God's people to some sense of normalcy again. That's what they wanted. And, and doesn't that sound like us today? Don't, don't, don't we want some sense of normalcy to just come back, right? And this was their heart. This is their goal. They wanted to restore God's people and, and, and see their hearts turn back to the Father. They wanted to see Judah return back to God. So that's kind of what we see in this, in, in this background here. So we come to Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah has some friends that come and visit him. It actually says it's one of his brothers, and he just, he, he says, hey, how are things going over in Judah? They're, they're visiting him from this destroyed, ruined place, and this is what they say in verse 3. It says this, they said to me, things are not going well for those who returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. I'm, I'm sure Nehemiah, he wasn't ready for what he just heard. It was kind of like that friend, you know, if you're at the grocery store and you run into someone you haven't seen in a while and they're like, you, you know, you're just like, hey, so how are you? And they actually, they tell you the truth. Like, <laughs> you know, they tell you how they're doing. Nehemiah, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to hear that the Jews are in great trouble. But it was through this conversation that Nehemiah's calling began to call him, that it, it, it began to actually call out to him. And this is the first key that we find in recognizing and stepping into our calling that God often uses in our life. It is the problem, the problem. I want you to drop the problem in the chat right now. See, oftentimes God uses problems as the, the, the soil from where our calling begins to sprout from. It can be a personal problem. It can be a social problem. And uh, just one example from, from my life in 2012, I was working as a, a server in my restaurant job, and out of the blue, I, I literally lose the ability to speak. I cannot form sentence, uh, sentences. I can't talk. It's just crazy. And I start to panic. I start to freak out. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand it. And this uh, leads me to uh, an extended hospital stay. So I'm in the hospital now. And doctors end up giving me a medical diagnosis that I never saw coming. And this, this diagnosis, it has me questioning my future. It, it, it has me questioning, like, well, man, like, what is going to happen in my life now and uh, feeling the fear and the, the anxiety, all of these emotions from this moment. But it was in that problem that the call to pray for physical healing and miracles came. I actually began to feel my, my heart breaking for those that experienced physical sickness in a way that I hadn't before. And I started to step out in that season and pray for people to be healed and seeing God do some incredible things. And it is very possible that if I didn't experience this, this personal problem in my life, that I would not have stepped into that particular aspect of my calling in the same way. See, it is the problem moments in our life that that, that actually uh, shake us out of complacency, that, that, that interrupt our routine, that actually cause us to see things completely different. And Nehemiah, in his comfortable palace position, he is confronted by the problem that his community is facing. He's confronted by the problem that his nation is in. And this leads to a broken heart within him. He begins to feel something. 
He didn't have clarity yet about what the next step and stages of his calling would look like, but he had a broken heart. And this broken heart and that humble place of just saying, God, I don't know what to do with this, but I am broken. I know something has to be done. This is often the starting place and the starting point for clarity to come for the next stages of our calling. And God begins to give the ideas. He begins to release the practicals often after this. So my question to you is this. What has your heart been breaking for in this season? Who has your heart been breaking for in this season? What has caused you to get emotional in this time? What has caused you to pray? What, what have you been like giving to the Lord in this season? I believe that in this pandemic that we are experiencing right now, I, I believe that in the racial tension we are experiencing, in the political climate that we're in, new companies, new ministries, new initiatives, uh, new things are sprouting up. Why? Because God is breaking hearts right now. He, he is breaking people's hearts in new ways, and he is releasing clarity for our calling. I learned this. I've, I've learned that our, our, our hearts actually aren't called to break for, the, for exactly the same things. It, it's, it's not... You know, our hearts aren't called to break for exactly the same things. There is a standard, like, level of compassion and action that we are all called to as human beings and as believers. But this is the beauty of the body, that diversity also includes our calling as well. It's different members with different functions that, that, that do different things, but it all leads to one goal, which is... God's will being done on the earth and his kingdom being extended. So it is so important to pay attention to what your heart has been breaking for. It's so important because this could be the beginning of a new calling being unleashed in your life. So after mourning for some time and praying, Nehemiah gets the clarity that he is looking for. And he goes to the king of Persia and he says to the king, hey king, the city of my fathers, it is in ruins and I am broken over it. Send me back, send me there so that I can rebuild it. And the king says yes. So Nehemiah, he, he leaves his, his good paying, his high paying, well benefit, like good benefits, government job, because oftentimes when God invites us to step into a new layer of our calling, it requires that we lay some things down. Sometimes you can't hold on to the same things when you're stepping into a new layer of your calling. So Nehemiah, he leaves the comfort of the palace and he goes to a destroyed Judah and Jerusalem. He goes to a destroyed and broken place. And the first thing that he does when he's there, he gathers some officials together. He gathers some other like government folks together. And this is what he says to them in Nehemiah 2, 17 and 18. But now I said to them, you know very well the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began, began the good work. Or another translation says that they said, let, yes, let's rise and build. So Nehemiah, he shares this crazy idea. This is a crazy, crazy idea. Let's rebuild this whole wall around this city and let's rebuild this city. Let's change it. He shares it, and they're like, yeah, we're in. Let's do it. And this is the second key that we find uh, recognizing and stepping into our calling. It is the partnership. I want you to put the partnership in the comments right now. See, our unique calling is an interdependent calling, not an independent calling. So that means that we actually need other people around us to do what God has graced us to do. Yes, it is, it is your calling, but God has intentionally placed gifts and talents and resources in other people so that they can come alongside you and champion and support what God has called you to do. And he's placed those same things in you for other 
people. So it's not simply a question about being in community. It is about finding your people. It's about finding your calling partners. It's about finding those that challenge you. It's about finding those that champion you. It's about finding those that you can be honest and vulnerable and open with. Those that you can tell some crazy ideas to, but they'll say, yeah, okay, it's, that sounds crazy, but let's rise up and let's build. We could do this. It's about having the right people around you. So my next question is, who do you have around you? Who do you currently have around you? Because your relationships can either cap your calling or they will champion your calling, but they will not do both. So it is with, it's with these partners that Nehemiah, he's actually able to do all the things that God told him to do. He, he, he rebuilds the wall, and him and Ezra, they rededicate the people of God back to God, and they do some other awesome things, and things are looking great. And he actually faced some opposition, a lot of opposition, because walking in your calling and stepping into new layers of your calling, how many of you all know that it is not easy? It comes with some challenge. It comes with some opposition. And this opposition is sometimes obvious, sometimes it's not. But if it were easy, we wouldn't need the presence of God. If it were easy, we wouldn't need the presence of partners. So Nehemiah, he, he overcomes that. And things are looking great, right? Things are looking good. Then you fast forward to the end of the book. And the book doesn't end the way that we would all expect it to end, right? I'm, I'm expecting at this point, a, and they lived happily ever after. That's what I'm expecting. And that doesn't happen. The people just return right back to sin. They, they go right back to sin. They go right back to idol worship. Nehemiah does all these things. So what happens is that uh, Nehemiah's calling actually didn't look the way he thought it would look. What he thought would happen as a result of his calling actually did not happen. And the book literally ends with Nehemiah saying this, remember me, oh God, for good. <laughs> He's just like, hey, God, I tried. <laughs> and, and, and in this statement, though, is, is the last key that I want to talk about to recognizing and stepping into our calling. It is the purpose, the purpose. So you can go ahead and drop the purpose in the comments right now. See, I saved this one for last because oftentimes we see the purpose or the why of our calling as simply being something that we do or we don't do, that we accomplish or we don't accomplish, but it's not that simple. We see our destiny as a destination, but when this is our perspective of our calling, what happens is we become vulnerable to depression, to despair, to disappointment. Why? Because things do not happen the way that we expect them to happen. And this is exactly what happened to Nehemiah. He thought that if he just rebuilt the wall, if he did all the amazing things that God told him to do, that the people's hearts would turn back to God and there would be this great spiritual revival. But when that didn't happen, Nehemiah thought he failed. He thought that he missed it. But this is what Nehemiah missed that we know, is that only Jesus can bring revival. Only Jesus can turn a sinner's heart into a saint's heart. Only Jesus can, can, can reunite the Father to those that are on the earth. And Nehemiah, he missed out on this very key element of calling, literally just because of the era he lives in. And, and this is something that Nehemiah would have given anything to know. And I'm going to tell you right now. Like he, he, he would have given anything to understand this, anything to experience this that the ultimate purpose, the ultimate why of our calling is to do it with Jesus. It is to do it with Jesus. This is why it says in 2 Timothy 1.9, the verse we opened up with, this is why Paul, he says that, hey, you, you've been given resurrection life and, and this holy calling on your life, and it's a result of God's pleasure and his grace, and all of this is, is a fruit of the union that you share with Jesus. See, we do this with Jesus. It's about doing it with, uh, doing it with him. And, and yes, your calling, your unique calling on your life, it will enrich other people's lives around you. You will build things. You will fix broken things. Uh, yes, but it is not about 
doing everything perfectly. It is not about meeting the cultural standards of success and doing all the things that culture says we should do. Your calling is not a destination. It is a journey. Because if I am doing it with Jesus, I can trust that Jesus can do what I cannot do. I can trust that Jesus' definition of what success is supersedes my definition of what success is. There's a difference between what Jesus has invited me to do versus what I think I should do. And this is what Nehemiah missed. And and I just felt like the Lord was saying today to, to a mother, to a father, that, hey, hey, I called you to pray for that son or daughter. I, I, I called you to, to model what it looks like to be a, a powerful Christian, to love them. Just because they're not where you thought that they would be today, that doesn't mean that you failed. That doesn't mean that I have failed them. No, I am working in their life. You just trust me. You stay on the journey with me. Remember your calling. I feel like he's saying to, 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 to somebody like, hey, I, I called you to start that business. I called you to do it with kingdom morals and kingdom values just because it's not where you thought it would be today doesn't mean you failed and it doesn't mean that I failed you. You just stay on the journey with me. I am working. Remember your calling. I want to I wanna challenge us today with these three questions. I want, I want you to write these down and just reflect on them this week because I believe the Lord wants to use them to bring some clarity. And the first question is this, is what has my heart been breaking for lately and how can I begin to pray and process what that means? The second question is, are my current relationships capping my calling or championing my calling? And number three is, what is my next yes on my journey with Jesus. I believe that God right now, he is shifting our understanding of what our calling is in this season. I believe that, that, that something is shifting specifically in 2021, that, that there, you know, there, there's life after this pandemic. This will end. And, and I believe he's shifting what we understand our calling to be. And I want to just remind you, you are not a failure. You are not a disappointment to God. It is not over. It is not too late. You haven't missed it. You haven't missed out on anything. And the bottom line is that through the problems that we face, through the partnerships and through the ultimate purpose of our life, which is Jesus, our calling will begin to call out to us. Our calling will begin to call us. It's not something you actually have to feel a pressure to find. No, it'll come after you. Nehemiah was just doing his government job, and this calling fell in his lap. And as we continue to give our yes to Jesus, as we continue to stay on the journey with him, different and new layers of our calling will be revealed, and Jesus will give us the grace that we need to walk in it. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your faithfulness. You are faithful, God. No matter the circumstances around us, you are faithful. You are good. And I pray, God, for every person uh, with us today, and I, and I pray that, that we would be able to see what you are doing, that we would be able to see what you have called us to do and how our calling even um, fits into the greater scheme of of what we are called to as a church and what we're called to as a community. Um, Bless everyone um, who is here, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to the message today. To experience more powerful messages, go to vineyardlive.us or join our Vineyard Live Plus community to view conferences, trainings, and special teachings.